if you have your Bibles let's go together with me to book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts is the acts of the Holy Spirit. It's the acts of what the Apostle did with the Holy Spirit and if you didn't bring your Bible with you there is one on the screen and we will read. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Well since the Bible is written by different people but it's really written to us. Let me read it to you as people who live in Choice Cities. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Pasco, in all of Richland and in Kenwick and even to the ends of United States. It's talking about you. It's talking about me. Those names, you're not even close to Jerusalem and Samaria, but you're close to Kenwick, Richland and Pasco. And that's exactly what God wants to do when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Can somebody say amen? I want you to notice three big things in this verse. And these three things are the presence, wake up Slamita, the power and the purpose. So the power, the presence, is the presence misspelled? Oh, okay okay the correct the correct way somehow I felt like there was two s's there <laughs> now I think both of us need improvement on our English we're gonna sign up to the school of leaders <laughs> the power the presence and the purpose Jesus in this verse makes it very clear to us he says when the Holy Spirit will come upon the person he said that 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 person will receive power and this power is not to make them powerful or make them better people than others but so that this power will enable them to be a witnesses to Jesus and this power is going to make them such a great witnesses actually that they will not just witness in their home to their cronies and their their homies and just to their little clique but they will actually become witnesses to a whole city he's talking to a fisherman he's not talking to a powerful businessman He's not talking about to rich people. He's not talking about to influential people. He's not talking about to religious people. He's talking to ordinary citizens of Israel and he's saying when the Holy Spirit will become so real to you, you will receive power and this power will manifest itself. It will become active in your life when you will become witnesses and this witnessing that you're going to do is not going to be on the local level this is not just going to be on the street level this is not just going to be on the family level this is going to be on the level of the city actually on the level of the cities and then he said even I'm going to take you further than that activate it for the purpose I want us to write this if you take your notes activate it for the purpose I want to share with you something that is not new uh, maybe for those of you who are here with us for the first time or those of you who are coming again um, this may sound new but uh, for those of us who've been here at the church this is nothing particularly new but I want to refresh and remind our mind today of what really Christian life is all about. The first thing that we see in this verse is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come on you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and then you will get power. But first comes the Holy Spirit. I think last year was a year where a lot of us it was a fresh like a revelation fresh insight that the Holy Spirit is not a dove a wind fire or oil but the Holy Spirit first of all is a person when that reality begins to fall inside of our heart that he is a person it creates a possibility for a relationship until there is an understanding that he is a person you cannot have a relationship with someone you keep referring to as it 
you cannot have a relationship with someone you keep calling it we were we were at the camp in minnesota and at the last day and i have the clip i just don't feel like playing right now where at the end all of the youth got up and they started to share of what they learned from the camp almost half of one thing that they were mentioning is that what they've learned is how holy spirit is a person and most of these youth speak in tongues most of these youth grew up and they know how the moment prayer hits to pray very loud and to pray very loud in tongues and even when most of them would share this is what they would say and i've learned that uh, the holy spirit and they would keep calling him it until a few times i would stop by and say you didn't learn anything bro i'm like you need to change the way you refer to the holy spirit because jesus went to heaven and he said instead of jesus he sent the holy spirit to be with us and the, jesus never referred to holy spirit as it that means until our mind gets an upgrade and a renewal that he is not it our relationship with him is not possible and when it's not possible something happens the bible says in galatians walk in the holy spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh that means as i have relationship not just with someone in heaven but with someone here on earth the holy spirit this gives me a power to not fulfill the lust of the flesh now a side note the bible doesn't say if you walk in the holy spirit you will not have lust of the flesh many people think if i develop relationship with holy spirit i will never want to do anything bad i will never be tempted i will never be in com compromising situations nothing bad will ever happen to me my lust of the flesh will be gone with but it's not what the bible says the bible says when i walk in the holy spirit means when i develop a relationship with holy spirit when the lust comes and knocks on the door the holy spirit gives me courage not to answer it I'm tempted but not sinned can somebody say amen? amen but how can I walk with someone I keep calling it how can I walk with someone that I treat no differently and I treat my vehicle and I treat the vending machine or the way I treat every other object at my disposal when the Holy Spirit is not a person in your mind you will treat him as it either you will seek to control him or you will be completely distant from him and i think last year was very clear and i want us to remind us of that again that the holy spirit is god the holy spirit came on this earth to us and the holy spirit is a person you and i can have relationship with it's not the presence of the holy spirit that guarantees your success it's your relationship with him inside of you you have two kind of things first one is your flesh your flesh is what satan gave you when you got born it's it's his birthday gift it's a sign of appreciation for showing up on this earth <laughs> and he's not getting thanks for it right no because flesh is the reason why you do stupid flesh if you thought flesh is some uh, fancy word for for being smart no it's a fancy word for being no good it's a fancy word for being and all of us have it flesh it's the carnal nature it's the things in us that wants to do bad but it's interesting there is people who have flesh you know Hitler had the same flesh as you did he did a lot of damage with that flesh mother Teresa had the same flesh as Hitler did what was the difference did mother Teresa's flesh was better Christian flesh when you get saved the Bible never says God gives an upgrade for your flesh your flesh still is flesh that's why Christians can do some unbelievable things because Bible says all things are possible to those who believe <laughs> your flesh is still flesh have you noticed that even when after you gave your life to Jesus you have not recognized that the flesh is still there and it did not get Christian but when you get become a Christian God gives you a gift and this gift is he gives you the Holy Spirit so within you you have two the flesh or the Holy Spirit a life of victory does not depend on having the Holy Spirit 
it depends on yielding to the Holy Spirit and life of sin does not come from having flesh it comes from yielding to your flesh and I want us to understand this on the level of our subconscious having the Holy Spirit does not guarantee you will have a powerful life having the Holy Spirit does not guarantee you will see miracles in your life you have a chance for it just like having a wife does not mean you have a happy marriage just because you have a wife that does not guarantee happiness for some trouble the presence of a person does not guarantee a relationship you all have parents in your house that does not mean you have a relationship with them that is good same thing with the Holy Spirit if people can have the Holy Spirit but if we don't understand first of all that he is a person we don't even have a chance to know him as a person for many people the Holy Spirit has been reduced to speaking in other tongues those of you who are coming new and maybe you got saved in our church and this is completely maybe new phenomenon or manifestation to you and you're you know watching when people pray in tongues and you're like ah, this is this is interesting different doesn't sound like Russian this definitely not Spanish it's something else and these people just keep going at it keep going at it and you're like awesome let me tell you what this is the Bible talks about the gift of tongues where God gives it to us it's our prayer language the Holy Spirit fills us we yield to him he takes over our our mouth and not we don't become manipulated we don't become he doesn't drive us it's still we still conscious and we still control it and those words they mean a whole lot to God they worship God and they connect with God many times there were stories when somebody would speak in other tongues that the other person in the church will understand that in some other language like French Spanish or something else it's like it happened in the Bible and for many people this has become a catalyst experience with the Holy Spirit if I get the tongues that's it that means I have the Holy Spirit and some people even begin to refer to Holy Spirit as tongues I remember hearing one testimony actually right here when a young lady returned from Mexico trip and she said my Holy Spirit learned few new words and I was like which spirit do you talking about because the Holy Spirit does not learn new words you mean that the gift of tongues you now have few other words syllables that you didn't have before that is completely different from actually the Holy Spirit as a person a gift is something he gives but God didn't just give us the gift he gave us the giver can somebody say amen you know a few weeks ago I've, it's become my tradition I overcome my prejudice against people with signs help me um, you know I used to drive by and seeing somebody with a sign you know I'm a veteran or something and I just always kind of like ah they're making it up and and lately I've been just kind of realizing it's up to them I just salute them for having the boldness of having a sign <laughs> in the cold <laughs> even if I would be in need I probably would never have the audacity to stand with a sign and I remember I would have you know a few few dollars if I would have a few dollars I would always just kind of find somebody and just give it to them just bless them even if they're making it up God bless them maybe those few dollars will change their life I don't know but imagine you standing with a sign and some like me drives by and I give you money I give you a gift with that gift you received something very precious it might last for a day a year or two but that gift did not give you a relationship with me amen I'm very fortunate to have a, a young man who sit who sits in the first row today who's a marine Nufo his daughter is here today actually also don't worry I'm not gonna call you up you're all good <laughs> when I was gone uh, Nufo actually uh, bought a, a very big TV 65 inch TV uh, for my house well it's because so all of you can watch comment we can watch videos YouTube videos and Prophet TV Joshua and it's a very <laughs> very very big very very big TV and it's a very expensive TV now the difference between me giving something to someone on the street and Nufo is this is that when I receive the gift from Nufo I have a relationship with Nufo and this gift will only strengthen that relationship because now Nufo has another reason to come to my house <laughs> I'm giving some of your hints how to get more welcomes <laughs> I'm just kidding and so and now Nufo has 
it's it's a different because there is a relationship and this fosters a deeper relationship a closer relationship where he feels that home is almost almost kind of like hey I can drive by and say hi because that my gift is there the speaking of tongues doesn't create a relationship with Holy Spirit but it gives us an opportunity to have a deeper relationship if we choose to amen and I want us to understand that today that even spiritual gifts other gifts that don't necessarily mean that a person has a relationship some people have gifts of speaking some people have gifts of this and that but it does not necessarily mean they have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and it's most important for us this year to get to know God who's here all of us fantasize to get to know God who left not God who came we read about we write movies about God who and, and please understand when I say left I don't necessarily mean his presence is everywhere but when Jesus said that I am leaving the earth but someone else is coming every revival where miracles happen every revival Holy Spirit was recognized there's there's meetings church religious meetings where a lot of people but supernatural aspect is completely gone and if you will track it down it has a lot of morals it has talented leaders and speakers supernatural things don't happen without one being the Holy Spirit Jesus didn't do one miracle without the Holy Spirit nor will you nor will I Jesus everything he did was because of the Holy Spirit and if we are to live similar life it has to be the person of the Holy Spirit has to be at least acknowledged respected and honored when you recognize he is a person you begin to recognize another person for example if you are driving in a car let's say you're going to a Seattle I remember last Wednesday we were driving uh, after the service and a wonderful young man Bogdan took me to Seattle um, and I was very tired and I was actually sleeping half and on but because a person who was driving me was a person even when I would wake up and I am tired and I needed to catch my sleep I would still try to have some kind of a conversation letting him know I recognize he is behind the wheel now imagine that's fine if you don't talk to someone for three hours but imagine not talking to someone for three years for years someone who is behind the wheel in our world today holds the galaxies in his own hands he is the reason you can take a next breath he is the reason both of your knees will hold your weight when you get up he is behind the wheel and many times we fantasize about a spare tire in the trunk instead of at least recognizing and sometimes saying Holy Spirit I need you Holy Spirit I love you Holy Spirit help me many people talk about him but not to him directly many people pray to God Holy Father send the Holy Spirit now realizing he is right here beside you and the Bible doesn't say to pray to Holy Spirit though he is God and we can pray to him but the Bible says to fellowship means like you talk to someone in the car you can fellowship with him you can talk to him recognize him amen so first is the Holy Spirit and he is a person and we're also reading right now through our book and we are learning that not only Holy Spirit is a person but the Holy Spirit has a language and this language is visions and dreams let me give it to you there's just a simple version faith God does not speak Spanish he does not speak English God speaks faith the Bible says in Romans 4 17 that God calls those things which are not as though they are what does that mean that means God looks at something that doesn't exist and he talks about it as though it does that is how God speaks that's how he communicates most of our talk is not verbal words are only the clothes if I could use that word it's just the vocabulary that closes our thoughts our communication is always internal even when you drive in a car and nothing is coming out of your lips you're talking statistics says I don't know how they figured that statistic out 70,000 thoughts go through your head every single day that's more than words 
and typically you speak about 25,000 words a day if you're a lady and young and if you're a man it drops dramatically dr dramatically but thoughts you have about 70,000 thoughts every single day because you really communicate with yourself with thoughts not with words you can be driving in a car and you're talking full speed nobody can hear you and what you're saying in that moment when no one hears you is really your language your language is not the one that you put on application English or Spanish your language is the language that is inside of you that you talk to yourself when no one else hears for some people their language is the language of I should have not done it I should have done this I should have would have could have for some people it's the language constantly of doubt the language of fear and the language of shame for some people it's the language of defeat the language of negativity and the language that always bad things happen to me and nothing ever good happens to me for some people it's the language of insecurity and it's the language of worry anxiety or for some it's the language of depression it's it's constant dominating constantly flows inside of your mind that is your language your spiritual language is the dominating thoughts that occupy your mind when you're alone that's your language the the national the the language that we all speak communicate with one another is English Spanish but the language that we have actually inside of us it's the dominating thoughts that occupy your mind when you're alone dominating thoughts occupying your mind when you fall dominating thoughts occupy your mind when you try to do something and it fails dominating thoughts they occupy your mind when you're 27 and when you were 20 you thought you'll be married by 25 those thoughts that's your language dominating thoughts when you prayed and you thought everything is good I don't feel that pain no more you go back home and you realize that pain is still there the dominating thought that occupies your mind inside of you nobody sees it and hears it but inside of you that is your language is that language language of faith or language of fear this year is what we're learning in order to communicate with God you have to learn another language and that's a language of faith that means when you speak to God you have to have images in your mind that line up with the desires of your heart we all have desires inside, inside of our hearts to be happy to be prosperous to be in peace to be overcomers to be close to God that is deep 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 in the heart but when it comes to the mind it I think the the junkyard over there in Pasco looks cleaner than some of our mind. That deep in our heart there is secret desires to be successful, to achieve. Even if in our mind we believe God doesn't want you to be successful, God doesn't want you to be prosperous, but deep in the heart you believe in that. You're just afraid to admit it to yourself. Deep in your heart there's a dream, but it doesn't line up with the one in your mind because the mental picture many times that is not the same as one it's here I know how it was for me for many years when deep on the deep 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 on inside I wanted to be a person of influence I wanted to be a person who will impact other people who will who will bring people to Jesus who will pray for the sick and who will be married and who will you know have a house and have a car that's deep deep on inside but my mind was overloaded with images visions and convincing dominating thoughts I was no good I was worthless and I was born as an accident and people have never told me that my parents loved me I grew up in a good family everything was fine you know who told me that the devil I received it as my own and when I would be by myself that is the language I spoke but when that language would come to silence I would hear in my heart there's a bigger dream that contradicts what I see with my eyes, that contradicts what I feel with my emotions, that contradicts what people maybe are saying, that dream inside contradicts what actually the doctor's report is saying, it contradicts what I've experienced in the past, it contradicts the reality of the fact that this has never ever happened to me but it's still there and if it's there maybe perhaps God is trying to wake me up to say line up your thinking pattern with the deep dreams that place inside of you 
and see this is exactly what we need to understand to communicate with Holy Spirit you have to reach deep inside of your spirit don't pull up the headlines from your mind of the things that happened yesterday or things that happened 10 years ago or five years ago pull deep into your spirit and find the promise of God and that God has placed inside of you stop lying to yourself admit to yourself the things that you secretly wish would also belong to you God will make it reality it is God you communicated with when you're lining up your thoughts with your dreams. You may say, oh, this is, God has nothing to do with that. Look throughout the Bible and you will see. Jesus always complimented people's faith and always rebuked. Not people's sins, but their unbelief. What is unbelief? It's when you trust what you see more than what you know. What you see with your physical eyes is of more importance than what you believe with your spiritual, spiritual heart. That God is on your side. Everything will be all right and He will help you to get through. Can somebody say amen? And God wants us to learn this new language. This language is so hard to learn. Language of faith. And this language is not what you speak that you walk around saying, I am blessed, all is well, God is on my side. That's a, that's a Christianese and that's not hard to learn few months of coming to church and you'll start dropping those scriptures and walking around as though you know everything and on inside nothing can change. Amen. This language is a little bit harder to learn. Let's welcome Yura. How are you doing? Good. As you've noticed from one word that he said, this brother is fresh <laughs> from the airplane. <laughs> he came to visit us from Ukraine. He's my cousin and he's working here. Very, very awesome young man. Uh, he's single. <laughs> so there's another reason why he came here, not just to make money, but that's not why he's here. And he's, he has positive, strong self-esteem. So this is not going to destroy him completely. But as you can imagine that reading English does not come very easy for him. <laughs> There's many of you here that reading English won't come easy. But I didn't want to pull you out because it would look really bad for you. Because you live here. But he doesn't live here. He only lived here for... Where are you now? Where are you now? Where are you So about seven something months he's been in the United States so far. Okay. That's, that's pretty good time, right? Seven, seven, uh, seven months. And he's going to read Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Now when he had spo spoken then things, uh, when they watched, he was taken up and could acquaint him uh, out uh, all the sing. Didn't know how to read English. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> this was supposed to be that you don't know how to read none of the English. Wow, that's pretty good. Just few sinking, sinking. We had one brother who would, uh, one of the Russian people, they cannot pronounce thinking, so they say sinking. I remember we had one gentleman who got up to preach and he said, he said, I was sinking and sinking. We're like, how did he survive that? How did he didn't drown? <laughs> We're like, where did you, what were you drowning yesterday? He's like, no, I was sinking. <laughs> we're like, oh, you were thinking. But did you see, I want you to see how Yura, though he studied in Ukraine English, because you couldn't learn this in seven months, that's for sure. And you see how hard it was for him, though he lives in America, to learn the language of the United States. Just because you come to church, that does not mean walking by faith will come instantly. It's almost like learning a new language. You first catch yourself and realize you're not good at it. Then you're trying to think one thought positive while 220,000 20, 20, are negative. And you feel like you made a little accomplishment and then you look at the way other people are and you just feel like you're so behind. Learning to walk by faith and what I mean by that is learning to inside the talk inside of you that you have to be constantly lining up with God's Word and positive things from God's Word is almost like picking up a new language and trying to learn it in one day. 
you will be discouraged but if you don't give up when he finds a girl and gets married very soon you will see he's going to be reading this and throwing beats to it because all of us can learn a new language if we keep practicing it and don't give up can somebody say amen let's give a round of applause for you people who have relationship with holy spirit are not those who don't make mistakes they refuse to be conscious of them people who have relationship with holy spirit that's consistent are not those who don't have weaknesses they're not conscious of them when they made a mistake they come to god and they say lord forgive me and god restores them and from that moment on they choose to be conscious of the righteousness not of the things they've done that were wrong five minutes ago many times the falls we take and the mistakes we make last from five to ten minutes but the consciousness of them that we carry lasts from five to seven months and it's not the mistake that destroys you it's the fact it goes from your life and creeps into your mind and it stays there and it becomes your language it becomes your inner language of guilt shame and condemnation and that's what the bible says kingdom of god is righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit lets me know if i want to be in the holy spirit my mindset has to be on the things that are right not on the things that i did wrong and then it will lead to me having peace and it lead to me having joy as long as I am conscious of my mistakes of my past of my weakness of the things that can't be of the things that shouldn't be of the things that I don't deserve as long as I am conscious of that I and God cannot communicate freely the same way you cannot communicate with someone who does not speak your native language what you are going to do with God is what people do when my babushka does when she goes on yard sale one two three and six i this hmm, three thank you that's all and many people that's the relationship with god the way they know how to get hold of god oh god i'm so worthless i'm so stupid i know god i'm just so not good enough and we twist the voice we add tears to it and the interesting part and we start complaining we start whining and we feel good afterwards complaining is like throwing up you always feel good and people around you get sick yeah you walk around and you say it felt so good God must have touched me God is so good he's even merciful who will come and literally use sign language to communicate with him but we have to understand if you come to church after some time we have to learn to pick up not Christianese but faith you might not know the Christian lingo you might not know how to call me or a pastor instead of calling him pastor you call him priest like my friend Nufo, he's like, the mass was good on Sunday. I said, mass what? <laughs> and I love that because see, Nufo does not know the Christian lingo. Most of us know Christian lingo, but we don't know faith. We don't know what to do when we are in a crisis and everything screams against us. God does not want you to learn Christian lingo. It's okay to keep calling your pastor priest. God bless you. You can call the church mass. It's completely okay. What's not okay is that you go through life and you keep speaking Christianese, but you don't know faith. You don't even know the glimpse of what it's like to walk by faith. Can somebody say amen? So relationship with Holy Spirit cannot go beyond our speaking his language and as we are reading in our home groups and we are learning that his language is not fears his language is not nightmares his language is dreams and visions what is dreams and visions and I'm not talking about the things you get at night and I'm not talking about the things that you know that somebody gives it to you dreams means the deep images of your heart dreams and vision means the things inside of you the self-talk that you have these are the language this is faith the woman who touched Jesus's hem of garment the Bible says she said to herself if I touch him it's over 
The interesting part is this. How did the person who was writing knew what she said to herself? If she said to herself, nobody heard her, how did they know? I don't know. But I do know. Sooner or later, what go goes inside of you, everyone will know about. It's not just about her. It's about you too. It's about me too. Sooner or later, what's going on inside of you, everyone will know about. Even Jesus, will, it will catch his attention. The question is, what are you saying inside of you? That is the, your language. That is your language. Yes, you speak Spanish, you speak English, some of you speak other languages. But inside of you, make sure you have another language that you are learning at Hungry Generation. Language of faith instead of fear. This is the way you connect with the Holy Spirit. When you made a mistake, maybe things are difficult. I remember when my wife last Wednesday, she woke up and she said, I'm scheduling and I'm going to the doctor. I said, miracle catch tonight. It's not just for our people. It's also for you and it's also for me. I said, we first go to Jesus and then we go to the doctor. I'm like, We're, we love doctors, but they always come second. First prayer, then the doctor. And plus, at this moment, we don't have an insurance. Our insurance is Isaiah 53. By his stripes, I am healed. <laughs> That's why people always say, why is it easier for us to believe? See, for many of you, you don't have to believe. Because you just go use your $3,000 deductible. But for some of us here, faith is all we got for now. And I remember, I turned to my wife and I, and I got a little bit angry at her. I said, you can't say those things. I'm like I know you want my sympathy but I'm like please I cannot make that lump go away and I'm like I know it's noticeable and for girls I mean a little thing shows up on your head on your neck it ruins their whole life and so and we were praying and I said tonight we're gonna pray and God is gonna heal you too he, he's no respect he loves us he's not against us and she said well but these things just they just don't disappear I was like well you can choose what you want to think about it's your choice you know and well I guess she agreed to think about good things and the Holy Spirit has made it possible can somebody say amen? amen same thing with that poster it has become something inside of my heart I want this to be inside of yours as we go into this year this year will be the year where God will make those dreams come true but make sure they don't die because of the overwhelming weight of your mind make sure they break through and they occupy also your mind in the name of Jesus. So Holy Spirit is a person we learn. And then the Bible tells us that when we connect with this person, we also will receive power. When we receive power, that means that His power begins to work in our life to the degree we know Him as a person. First comes the person, not the power. First comes the Holy Spirit, not the miracles. Many people want miracles and you can get miracles but if you get relationship you get a lifestyle of miracles. Bartimaeus had his eyes open completely. He was blind. Lazarus was dead and he was brought back to life. Woman that I just mentioned to you, she, her blood issue was stopped and she was completely healthy. Ten lepers had their leprosy skin disease that was incurable completely gone. But it's interesting that if you read book of Acts, you don't see Bartimaeus ever again. You don't see Lazarus ever again. You don't see cathedrals. You don't see churches named after them. And you don't see Christianity saying thank you for bringing the gospel to us. Why? These people experienced a miracle but they never had a relationship. And therefore they only had a touch with power, not a life of power. Peter, John and these guys, the Bible says they walked in this power till their last breath. See the power of God is not something God wants to do for a season, for a revival. He wants that power to follow our life every single day after retirement until you leave this earth. That to be with you. Can somebody say amen? Because we choose 
to connect with the Holy Spirit. We choose to partner with the Holy Spirit because He doesn't leave us and we choose not to leave Him and God says as you honor the Holy Spirit, the power begin to, begins to flow. And we want to be people who live with that power. See the power of God is not something that is optional. This is not like you know you have a car and some cars have you know butt warmers. Seed warmers or whatever that thing is called. <laughs> the same thing. Relax. Those things that you sit and they really make your seat warm. And many people think that to be a Christian with power is like having a little extra thing on the side. Until you have cancer. Until you have to use an inhaler four times a day. Or until you get fired from a job because you have seizures. Or until every relationship you pick up shatters and you end up divorced, broken credit record, uh, bankrupt and all of these things you can't get a house you can't do this and you're the time biological clock is ticking and you seem like everything is fine in my life and nothing is fine until that kicks in and you realize there's a lack of power we don't think see power is not like a battery in your house if you come home tonight and there is no power there is no life for starters your phone won't work there is no internet your refrigerator won't work your dishwasher won't work, your washer and dryer won't work, your computer won't work, your TV won't work, nothing will work. Your life stops. Yet somehow when we think of the power of God, we think that it's like something optional. Here you have everything you need and if you want power, it's a cherry on the top of a cake. It's not a cherry on the top of a cake. If it would be, God doesn't just give us cherries, He gives us power. The beautiful thing about power, you can plug anything into it. God doesn't just give us a device. He gives us power. If you have a power in the house, you can plug your phone, you can plug a dishwasher, you can plug a refrigerator, you can plug a TV, you can plug those people who are sick, they get touched. You can plug those people who are depressed and they find peace. You can plug those people who are lonely and they can find a relationship and can find restoration. You can plug those people who are addicted and they can find freedom. You can plug anything to power and it begins to bring you life. Can someone say amen? So there's presence, there is power and the last thing is there is purpose and the purpose is the presence of God, the Holy Spirit brings the power of God, the power of God, the miracles of God. This is to bring the purpose of God into a reality and the purpose of God is to see people come to Jesus, people get saved, people go to home groups and become leaders. Now the thought that I wanted to share with you is when before verse 8 before verse 8 the reason why Jesus said you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you is not because disciples were fasting for 40 days to have revival it's because finally Jesus after being risen from the dead the hopes of Messiah crushing Roman kingdom were resurrected please understand these people have one thing on their mind killing Romans destroying them and finally setting up a kingdom that will rule the whole world like all the prophets predicted so they're not here talking say Jesus we really want to cast out demons heal the sick we just want to build churches Jesus home groups Jesus we just want home groups no these guys have nothing like that on their mind the only thing on their mind is Jesus is this the time the time for what Jesus knew what they were talking about the time where you become the emperor we become the generals and we go whoa conquer the world since you died that idea died you rose again it came again and Jesus said leave that alone and this is what he said it's none of your business do what I tell you learn about Holy Spirit walk in His power and save people and other ideas that you have I'll make them happen on my time are you more like disciples today? The church is talking about winning souls, but you have your own little kingdom that you're trying to set up with God. You're like, yeah, yeah, this whole winning souls, that's for him and her and them. Why? Because they have nothing else going on in their life. But for me, on the other hand, I'm running for an emperor. And I just need Jesus to put a signature on the bottom of it. Are you one of those people 
who the vision of Jesus the Holy Spirit that's like well this is awesome and cool if I can ever get free time which probably will never happen in this life I will definitely check this out sounds very interesting and appealing but right now I'm busy I have school I have so many other things and Jesus says listen I can make those things a reality they will become a reality put them into my hands but right now there's something more important than your dreams fantasies and ambitions it's the person of the Holy Spirit it's his power that will flow through your life and the purpose that you will work through in Jesus name can someone say amen Jacob uh, John can you come for a second Johnny Nufo can you come and uh Nas Nas okay so you'll go first uh, okay okay there's three stages of spiritual life the first stage is the stage of the baby everybody say hi baby it's fine the baby here is a baby boy the second stage is the stage of the youth and then the third stage is the stage of the father the stage of the father as a baby there's one characteristic about this young man he needs care he needs care not that this guy doesn't need care but he, he takes care of himself you know all of this he bought with his own money all of this he didn't buy with his own money mama bought him because he is still being taken care of he's a good kid he's a good guy but he's still being taken care of this guy learns to take care of himself and this guy on the other hand doesn't just take care of himself he takes care of other people this is the year where your purpose for some of us let me make it very practical practical for some of you who just given your life to Jesus you're here you have to let somebody take care of you somebody to check on you somebody to encourage you somebody to tell you listen you're gonna make it when you feel like you won't God really loves you when you feel like he doesn't others of you this will be the year you need to grow up cry a river build a bridge and get over it honestly stop stop whining and grow up you don't need people to spoon feed you for 10 years and people cannot be bringing you inviting you to church for God's sake 15 years already and the only thing you're doing is warming up that bench and that's it and you constantly need encouragement and you're like a you literally you, you suck life out of people you come in and there's no air in the room because you're constantly whining constantly complaining constantly God doesn't love me and it's been like this 15 years listen throw away the diapers wipe your face and grow up period can somebody say amen the third stage this year will be the year where you if you are that person you feel like you know what I took care of my issues I'm running the race I'm fulfilling my duties nobody needs to invite me to church I'm there a little bit earlier I'm running the race who are you mentoring who is in this church who can say this person is helping me with my spiritual life to do that you have to sacrifice two things time and money time and money and God this is where God wants us all of us to be that's why home groups is for everyone because everyone sooner or later has to grow out of his diapers home groups are not for people who choose to be old not physically but spiritually selfish stagnant complacent bored that is for who home groups are not the rest of us it is the pleasure to work with people who meet Jesus it is a privilege to work with people who find Jesus there is no better privilege in this world to be a father and they will tell you every father and every mother will tell you having kids has been the craziest thing in my life they drive me nuts but I will, if I would have a chance to do it again I would do it again because they're also the greatest joy of my life having people you help you raise up you pray for you believe in you encourage you love is the joy is the purpose from the baby to the youth to the father some of you here today you're not a baby you don't know Jesus maybe you're completely walked away from the Lord today you're gonna become a baby today you can find Jesus again today he can call you and he can bring you he can bring you salvation others of you need to finally download that Bible reading plan 
and actually start your reading reading your bible not just listening to Caleb music and not just getting your little verses on your phone every day and it's not enough to watch David's pictures with little Instagram inspiration it's not enough you have to have your own Bible reading plan can somebody say amen and the rest of us we are going to have a home group we're going to start home groups and we're going to see the glory of God move and change people's lives in Jesus name can somebody say amen